I would like to call the September 28th, 2015 school board meeting to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Kate, if you would do the roll call, please. Yeah, absolutely. Tom Cruise. Here. Jeff Young. Um, he is not here yet. Okay. I know. Cheryl Hancock, are you he, here? Here. <laughs> Anita Jagosinski. Here. I'm here. Lisa Collins. Here. Tim Meniker. Here. And Gary Dunlap. Here. Okay, with seven of the seven board members present, I would declare a quorum. Uh, board norms and reflection, I just note that our norms are in our folder and to follow those as we proceed um, this evening. Approval of the agenda, I would note that the agenda was posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. Are there any changes in mind? Seeing none, then I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda as published. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Yeah, I'm not seeing anyone, so we will continue on. Recognition and thank yous, um, Dr. Mueller. Yeah, we'd like to thank this evening the La Crosse Community Foundation um, for their generous donation of $3,700 as part of the Jim's Grocery Bag Grant. These funds pay for meals for underprivileged children in the district. Um, and also, we want, would like to thank Holman's Hope. They donated school supplies at Prairie View, crayons, notebooks, markers. And then also we'd like to thank Chris Shawley's agency for organizing um, and collecting boxes of tissues uh, from their staff and clients. And then they distribute it to our specialist classroom. So that was, you know, every little donation makes a, a big difference. So thank you very much. And thank you. I talk often about how the people in the district help support the schools, and that's what makes Holman the distinctive and, and quality school that it is. So thank you to the people in the community and the foundations for their support. And um, we see that each meeting we have, we have examples of that generosity. So then moving on to district administrator's report, Dr. Mueller. Yeah, one thing I wanted to bring up um, publicly is with all the changes in assessment in the last year um, or two, I should say, they, we did get information recently that there is the new assessment and it is called the Wisconsin Ford exam. Um, as parents and students, you probably remember the Badger exam last year. Well, that is no longer here. So this new assessment is called the Wisconsin Ford exam and it will be administered in the spring um, in English language arts and math in grades three through eight in science in grades four, eight and 10. Um, high school school students in grades 9 through 11 will continue with that ACT suite. Um, and then also, um, we've had a lot of excitement with staff recognition this <laughs> past week. Um, we found out that our very own uh, Mr. Roger King at our high school has been selected to move on as a national representative for our state of Wisconsin for the Teacher of the Year. Um, to have a staff member being representing the whole state and from the school district to Holman says a lot about the quality of our staff in our district. Um, not only Mr. King, but all of the colleagues he works with as he attributes a lot of his success to the community and, and the other teachers and so on that he works with in assistance. Um, and then also, Karen Coleman um, has been recognized as the Wisconsin representative for the gymnastics coach of the year. Um, and this qualifies her for fur further recognition at the regional and national level. And then one other part I just wanted to mention is next week, October 4th through the 10th, is actually um, Wisconsin School Board Appreciation Week. Um, there's so often that we have folks that do a lot and have a lot of commitment um, for our school district that we don't recognize, but 
this team that I'm sitting with here spend many hours, not they come to our meetings here, but they spend many hours outside of our meeting time, really making, trying to make a difference for the students of our district. So next week when you see them or you know any way you'd like to appreciate them, we just wanna appreciate you tonight because we won't see you till after that. <laughs> and then, um, and thank you for your great service to our school district and community. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, moving on then to, oh, I did have a question, the police liaison report um, that is in your written report. I know that I looked back and the, the last couple years we've had just a very um, generic kind of report, and I think it's set, it has a COP, <coughs> which I think is like the community uh, when they meet with students or they interact with students, I'm not exactly Actually, sure. What what that is, is the COP is basically when um, a police officer is um, at our football game. Okay. That's what the okay. other service is. So you'll notice those dates are on football game evenings. Okay. So that's All what right. that means. Yeah. But I know that in the past, it looks like it's such a small number of contacts, a small number of students. Okay. But I know that they go into classrooms and do presentations. Oh. And we've had a, a reports, I think, earlier. Um, years a couple years ago where it actually had that breakdown of how many classroom presentations and was that 60 students or was that a hundred students and I think that's good to know um, maybe go back and take a look and see if that would be difficult to track because it would it would be interesting to me because I think when we make that kind of an investment it's good to know that it's not just 15 contacts with students and Correct. that all the contacts are negative I mean that's the other thing is a lot of what the report is is the negative contacts if it's a parking ticket or something like that and mm -hmm. I think when we talk about the positive impact of having that liaison officer that would be good data to collect as well I agree. So as we move forward, what we can do is also track all of the positive interactions happening because I do know those are, as I've been there observing, even happening mm -hmm. daily with those student contacts. And maybe I should, am I the only one that's interested in that? If I am, then we can just keep on with what we I have am. or? I, oh, no, thumbs up. <laughs> He's uh, the, our liaison officer that we have here now, a really good friend of mine. And I talk to him all the time when I'm talking to him. The kids, he has dozens of contacts an hour. They all mm -hmm. come and ask him questions and where should I do this and what should I do that and this guy's doing this and thanks for the information and and uh, he's had some some uh, some arrests, some good arrests based on information he got mm -hmm. from the students. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to keep track of it. But he, you know, he's he's really interacting with the students. Boy, he's you never see him standing for two minutes without talking to the students. What I'd like to do is have it be more of instead of every single interaction because right. that could end up <coughs> taking yeah. up a lot of time away from the students yeah, have more great. of just a summary possibly mm -hmm. well and even when he goes into a classroom mm -hmm. you know to document that I think that's what we used to see and I can share with you a report I found in 2012 where we were tracking that so but you're right Gary I hear the same things anecdotally it sounds like he's making a lot of contact yeah. but we are data driven <laughs> you're a data driven guy you know I mean we should be somehow maybe tracking that kind of information it reminds too. me of like what lacrosse is doing when they they implant officers in a neighborhood mm -hmm. that's what every dare officer is and every officer that's in a high school and i think probably 80 percent of their goal is to make connections and you're right gary he he does that so well mm -hmm. i've worked and volunteered with him before in events at the high school he knows the names of mm -hmm. pretty much everybody yep okay all right thank you so then moving on to reports and discussion, I guess we have a report on summer school. Good evening, everyone. Seems like summer school was just yesterday. <laughs> um, Don't say that. <laughs> As Carrie is pulling up the uh, the PowerPoint, just want to share with you that it was another wonderful summer. At the elementary level, we had um, capped the attendance at 600, and we did receive um, 600 enrollments. 
um, but by the time everything was said and done and all the kids came, um, those who came for more than a day or two, there, we ended up with 578. Either they, they changed their minds or families had a commitment come up, something like that. So, um, And usually we're all set to project. Is, there, is this here or? I've never had to do this before, Mr. Clark. You shouldn't have. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a TA. Right. Not here. I, it's a PDF. So you have to scroll. I don't know why it was. No. Um, before summer school started um, at the elementary level we did have an open house for families and that was just to give parents especially of the youngest kids an opportunity to come to Viking Elementary take a look around see where the classes were going to be and help their kids feel very comfortable um, it was also an opportunity for the parents to get their fees paid and everything because we did have a few fees for some of our classes this year um, I had mentioned 578 students. Nothing else I think on here is new. Um, just a few of the classes um, are listed there. Um, again, nothing new from previous years. I do have to say a special publicly thank my secretary, Christy McKnight. She has just been amazing all of these years of summer school, puts in a ton of hours helping me get prepared. She's definitely my right hand person and uh, just does a ton of work. So I want to just um, definitely thank her um, as well as all the all these other people who are listed on the PowerPoint slide there. There's just so many people who come together and make summer school a really great experience for the kids. So um, we did have another video prepared. Um, Anne Marie Dahl does the is, served as the LMC director, and she had a volunteer, Olivia Torres, a student, um, who came in and took lots of pictures. And so, if you haven't yet seen this, because we did send it out earlier um, during summer school, please take a look. You do have to be logged into your school district um, email in order to see that video. So we hope you have time to take a look at that. So. Great, now I'll talk a little bit about uh, summer school at the middle school. And we just continually keep looking at how we can improve. We do that in a number of different ways, asking for input from our parents through our weekly newsletter and also with our teacher meetings at the end of summer school to see how we can provide both better enrichments for students and better supports that will help them prepare for their academics in the coming year. So we did offer this year reading, writing, and math enrichment <coughs> as well as band and orchestra. So we had a number of different enrichment options for students. All of the students did complete, uh, did successfully complete their grade advancement work in order to go on to the high school if they hadn't earned um, the GPA needed to do so. And one of the changes we're looking to make based on the input we got is to add an ESL course for 2016. So we're looking forward to working with our district staff, finding out what our needs are and how we can best meet those needs of students going forward. You can see our enrollment here. Um, a lot of these only had just one section and one teacher that was associated with that section. So overall, we had 132 students in academics and 225 in music, some of those being some of those same students that were in academics. Just as a reminder, our academic program is by invite. And so we look at those students in most need of support so we can provide them the gap instruction that they need, the smaller class sizes they need, and uh, the amount of time that they need in order to move forward. So like Sue, have a lot of thank yous. Our staff is tremendous. All the people that help get the building ready. Also uh, our uh, program in CD and autism also works very closely with festival every year, learning life skills, and they have been tremendous. So summer school, fairly similar to what it has been in past years, but we're excited to hopefully make an additional change next year and make it even better for kids. Good evening. Um, summer school at the high school, <clears throat> pretty much status quo as it has been in the past. We um, also offered enrichment courses and also some um, remedial courses. The oral communications had 25 students in it, health with 31, physical education 29, language 9, 22, um, <clears throat> band, orchestra, color guard, choir had large numbers, uh, the government class had 18, Academy Down on the Prairie had 18, and then Steps to Independent Living had 12, with a total of 334. 
Overall, there are 11 courses, 12 teachers, and we also had two EAs that were helping us out. 334 students were served. Registration for us is on a first come, first served basis. There's no question that if we um, could, we could, if it was feasible, we would offer um, some additional courses. And registration closed on May 8th. And classes ranged in size from 10 to 101 in band. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, band continues to grow for us. Any questions, comments for any of us? Um, no math was taken in the summer school? <clears throat> no, we have not had a math summer class in as long as I can remember. And because of our limitations due to the budget, we have not offered a math. We continue to go with the same ones that we've offered in the past. Any inquiry? Excuse me? Have, have there been students who've asked about it? Correct. How many? Oh, I, I'm pretty sure we could fill a class, but because of our budgetary restrictions, we, we haven't been able to go with it. Yeah. What would it cost to add a, a section a math class? Um, we pretty much have to pay our teachers whatever their per diem rate is. So between 1500 and 2000 I think it is um, at the middle school, but the high school courses run a little bit longer than that. So. Okay. Because it's concentrated, right? Is that why maybe? Because summer school? Correct. Yep. Seems like we can do something with that. That'd be good there. Because, I mean, yeah. with the skill loss over three months, math is always an, a challenging area for students from being away from it. We've had that discussion. I know. <laughs> Thank you. But, well, we've had the discussion of looking at additional summer classes, so. Year-round school might fix that problem. <clears throat> you and I have had that discussion before, so you know I won't argue with you. <laughs> I couldn't read that. We just have to, this goes from June until July 2nd. We just have to add another, you know, like a mid-July through August, and we'd have it. Mm -hmm. I have, I have a question yes, too. Kate. Carrie, um, first of all, those of you who presented summer school and all the people who helped plan it, it's like craziness to plan summer school. So yes, you're nodding your head. So all the people that aren't here tonight, um, please express my thank you too. Carrie, you mentioned that perhaps next year there might be additional things you'd like to do. Do you have those thoughts of what those additional things are? Or like I said, right now, I think one thing that we definitely will go forward with is an additional ESL class to okay. help our English language learners during the summer. And I feel like we can probably do that within our budgetary constraints because based on numbers, we might be able to, uh, this year we tried making writing and reading separate as enrichment courses and we could just combine those into ELA, have the class be a little bit bigger, gain a staff member back that way so then we could offer courses okay. for our English so right learners. now we don't have ESL for summer school. Is well, not important? specifically ESL, but any student that has a skill gap would be welcome to come. So okay. any students that have those those needs would definitely be welcome at summer school. But there's not a course designed specifically for them, like we're looking for for next year. All right. Thank you so much. You bet. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Just, just to mention that we do have ESL at the elementary level. Okay. You do. Okay. One quick question. All right. And this year we also offered a Hmong language class as one of the enrichments. And really? the, yes, the families uh, just really were very excited about that. And I got to sit in too for a little bit and just very interesting to, to see the different pieces of who teach that Who place. teaches that? Lee Lore is one of our um, ESL teachers yes. at Viking Elementary and she is the one who taught it. And she had a volunteer um, who came in from the community and, and assisted her. Wouldn't that be cool to open up eventually? You know, my ex teacher had, as a teacher, teachers could come to summer school <laughs> and, and learn this too. Yeah, that's very cool. Thank you. One last question. Um, my kids for years enjoyed the rocket making class. Is that still going on? That was stopped at the middle school. Oh, let's see here. While I've been there, so maybe seven years ago, it was kind of in the interim where I came over to be the associate principal there. So we haven't we haven't had that class for about seven years. Because I have a 
trophy case of my and <laughs> of rockets my kids made. So um, we had it. At, we had it kind of integrated into a, one of our science classes. Jody Holscheit from Sand Lake Elementary is um, has a great science background, and huh. so I know our early childhood kids were looking out the window one day because of all the rockets and really neat science things taking place outside with Jody in the science class. I can't remember the educator who taught it. She was an older lady, but she was the videos. My my kids just loved it. So anyway, thanks. You bet. Okay, last call for summer school questions. Otherwise, thank you very much. As always, your efforts are much appreciated. Um, so moving on to the consent agenda items, we have, let's see, six items on the consent agenda this evening. Uh, meeting minutes, personnel report, financial claims and accounts, budget status reports, uh, auditor's report, and the police liaison contract. Um, would anyone like to have any of those separated for consideration otherwise I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented I would so move is there a second a second okay and motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda items as presented all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed nay motion carries Okay, hey, so board members reports and discussion. You know, I was kind of thinking we might have to, I might have to say we aren't gonna have this tonight if the meeting went too long, but now it's like, okay, we've got some time, you can fill some time, so feel free to report away. Um, I'll call on board members in the order of their roll call and ask you to do any reports or any committee reports that you might have, the comments you'd like to share. So we'll start with Tom. Um, not a whole lot, just thank you for the gift. You all matter to me. It was really nice, so <laughs> cool. But uh, I was away for a few, a couple weeks on a personal, um, personal thing. But uh, had a nice finance committee meeting today. Um, got, uh, I'm impressed with keeping the, watching the dollars and cents and uh, being real proactive. I think we got a good team with that. So um, I'm just kind of getting back in the swing of things. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Um, Anita Jagosinski. Um, I have nothing at this time. Okay, Kate Mayer. Um, just a, a quick SALC um, student learning committee. Um, very much thank you to Ryan and Carrie who came to our meeting and uh, shared with us what they're doing with all the the new technology that's coming to our district. We have a lot of people in our district working on policies and what's best for kids and parents, et cetera. Next month, they'll come back again and talk to us, but um, some, just some wonderful ideas. And they're so aware of what the community thinks might be problems and what teachers might think might be problems, but more aware of the beauty of all that <laughs> this technology is bringing to us. So I really thank you. For that, um, I can only imagine how often you meet. <laughs> so, thanks for that. Um, we're also the second thing that we talked about was making sure that we include our pre-K into all of our reading um, policies, and so we're making sure that we get that in there where it is because if it doesn't happen in pre-K, where else does it happen, right? <laughs> That's where it happens. So um, thank you for the, the folks that caught that. Um, always thank you to Wendy and Julie. They're always so well prepared at these meetings and I appreciate them. I couldn't do this without them. So some cool stuff coming up. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Um, Lisa Collins. I don't have a lot to add. We had the finance committee meeting tonight and um, very interested in learning about the long-term debt plan for the district as that's just kind of starting to come into the the scope of um, what we're talking about um, versus like this year and I'm um, looking at last year's budget um, looking into the future and kind of a cool thing that Jay has kind of developed for us with policy review um, where all, all the committees are reviewing policies all the time and um, he's kind of developed a, a kind of a set of standards or things to like weigh out how you review policies and you know, making sure that kind of all the bases are covered with looking in the right places for information to, to set these policies. So it was kind of a, hopefully that'll get shared with the other committees too. It's a really neat, neat tool, so that's about it. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Uh, Tim Menninger. Um, really nothing to add tonight. Hey, Gary Dunlap. 
I didn't get a chance to congratulate Mr. King on his state award that was gone the last meeting, so I'd like to congratulate him on that. And, um, attended his, his surprise meeting, and uh, that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> That's all I have. Okay, well, thank you. Um, well, I just wanted to say congratulations. Our band, I think, took first at Applefest. Um, that was great. I know they um, compete against some pretty, the Onalaska um, Holman kind of competition there with the band is pretty big. And I saw the football team lost a, oh, quite a game on Friday, last Friday night. But again, proud of, you know, how they respond and that sort of thing. Um, I would note that um, as a school board, we are often faced with a lot of challenges. And as Chris was talking about um, the dedication of this board, I just want to compliment you. I know next week we people are taking personal vacation time um, to come to a board meeting and workshop. And that commitment, you don't always see that with other boards. And so I just wanted to take that minute or a minute to say thank you for doing that and taking that time out of your, your work day. Um, and giving it because in the long run it's giving it to the students so thank you so very much um, you matter and I know that you I really appreciated the fan I was getting a lot <laughs> earlier this evening so so that's why I'm gonna keep that here that came in handy so um, I just want to say thank you a personal note um, of thank you to all the board members who are who serve Tonight we have our annual meeting and we'll hear about the budget in a little bit. Um, but the annual meeting is really historic. You know, we, it is something that has been part of school boards in this state of Wisconsin for many, many years. It's been a requirement. And so historically it's something that um, has been done. And I know it's our 100th year. I don't know that we've had 100 annual meetings, but this could very well be the 100th annual meeting of the school really? district. So. Um, so yeah, I don't know exactly when all that legislation came in to say that we had to do this. We so. should have had food. Yes. Yeah. Food. <laughs> food. We, we do have a cake in celebration of you. Yes, Did there you is eat? cake oh, in the back, excellent. so we'll be able to go <laughs> yes. back. Cigars? Since, since we are getting done a few minutes early um, with our regular meeting, this is the marathon meeting, and there's no real way to time it out you know sometimes we've gone a few minutes over in our first meeting of the night um, I know but we have published our meeting times and we aren't able to go no, 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 earlier I mean oh well I'm so. trying to buy, buy time here so <laughs> so yes yeah, so um, anyway we do at eight o'clock is our budget hearing and then at nine or I'm seven, sorry seven. at seven is our budget hearing at um, eight is our annual meeting and then hopefully we can hold that to an hour and folks will be able to go and enjoy the rest of the Packer game so um, I would just note that there is a number of minutes from um, board committees in your packet um, and then also October 5th we have the workshop with Crown Global we also will at approximately seven o'clock have a short meeting where we will hear back about the bids um, for the um, Chromebooks for our students on October 12th is our regular meeting. We also at 6.30 will be recognizing and welcoming new staff members. So if you could try to mark your calendar to come a little bit early to do that. Um, and then October 26th, well I'm before that, October 21st is the WASB fall board or fall meeting. Um, and we have some of our board members who have achieved recognition um, levels in professional recognition for their work with, um, uh, on the school board here. And so if you are interested in attending, let, attending, let Christina know and she will get you registered. Um, and then the 25th, 6th, we have a board meeting. Um, there are two policies for administrative rule review this evening they're the student records and student privacy policies Kate are there anything specific about those policies or are they just up for annual review or regular I think review? let's just wait um, okay. for the annual review and then when okay. we finalize them then then that's when I'll share that okay and then um, any board meeting reflections you'd like to share otherwise I would entertain a motion to adjourn so moved. is there a second Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay? Motion passes. We are adjourned. Mm -hmm.